This is the Philippines, a country in Southeast Asia with a vibrant anti-imperialist movement. It was a colony for 300 years under Spanish rule, and after the U.S.-Philippines War at the turn of the 20th century, it then became a territory for the United States for the next five decades, where then it became an independent nation in 1946. But to claim independence is a bit murky. Today, the Philippines suffers from both U.S. and Chinese imperialism, where resources, markets, land, and labor are mostly controlled by these great powers. It is more accurate to say that the Philippines only has flag independence, because it's foreign imperialist powers who are actually in control of their own resources. In February of 2023, the U.S. and the Philippines political leadership announced that the U.S. military would have access to four more military bases. This makes a total of nine military bases in the country in which the Pentagon has access. This is our oldest treaty alliance in Southeast Asia. We conduct more than 500 defense engagements together every year. As President Biden has made clear, America's commitment to the defense of the Philippines is ironclad. It is an easy argument to make that the Philippines has a fascist political leadership running the country. The previous president, Rodrigo Duterte, was known for his red tagging and anti-drug campaigns which tracked and brutally murdered tens of thousands of people. Duterte says he's killed three men by his own hands. Rights groups say he's responsible for many more by using death squads to clean up the city. A string of more than a thousand unsolved assassinations, many teenagers, has raised questions about how Duterte lays down the law. One shot in the head would do it. A simple activist could be red tagged, their home would be raided, and they would be murdered right on the spot. Duterte was supported by the United States in these efforts. And during a lot of these brutal fascistic campaigns, China freely gave Duterte weapons. The current president, Bongbong Marcos, is the son of Ferdinand Marcos, a military dictator who brutally ruled over the Philippines from 1965 to 1986. Bong Bong, or Marcos Jr., is continuing both his father's and Duterte's fascistic policies which are supported by the United States. Peter Murphy, the chairperson of the International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, has stated, The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, plays a key role in the counterinsurgency operations of the Philippine government regularly committing human rights and international humanitarian law violations against unarmed peasants, indigenous people, labor leaders, and other human rights advocates. Human rights violations against Filipinos by U.S. soldiers have also been widely publicized, such as the 2014 murder of Jennifer Laud by U.S. Marine Joseph Scott Pemberton. The presence of U.S. troops always comes with consequences. In 2014, Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton of the U.S. Marine Corps murdered a transgender woman in the Philippines. After serving a sentence of just over half a decade, the previous brutal president of the country, Duterte, pardoned the Marine in 2020. In a September 2020 statement on the Global Day of Action Against U.S. Military Bases, Secretary General Joan Salvador of the Gabriela Organization a National Alliance for Filipino Women, stated the following. From 1991 to today, the U.S. has exerted control over the Philippines, and we see that in the way that criminals, even convicted ones like Pemberton, escape justice. In the end, it is Filipino women, children, and LGBTQ plus who suffer the most. As we remember the historic rejection of U.S. military intrusion, we also continue our battle in demanding freedom from U.S. intervention in all fronts, militarily, economically, culturally, and politically. 
The U.S. government views the Philippines not as an equal sovereign country, but as a mere military base in Asia. A world without Pembermans and Smiths is possible. When foreign military men see us as nothing but victimized, sexualized, and silenced, we counter that by being fearless, militant, anti-imperialist. Filipino women now take the charge in the fight against imperialism. Since the nominal independence of the Philippines in 1946, the legal specifics of the U.S. military presence in the Philippines has evolved. But the U.S. soldiers have remained in the country, providing support and training to members of the AFP. For a few years, U.S. troops were kicked out of the Philippines in 1991, but were allowed back into the country in 1999 in the VFA, or Visiting Forces Agreement. Today, increased U.S. military presence has larger geopolitical implications. Probably the most significant reason the U.S. is pushing for a larger military presence in Southeast Asia is due to the increased tensions with China. Like South Korea and Okinawa, the Philippines resides in the sweet spot where a large U.S. military presence will benefit them in their conflicts with China. From its bases in Korea and Japan in North Asia to Australian base access in the South, the Philippines was the missing piece in America's strategy to contain China's growing military might. The location of the Philippines is very strategic. Uh, my successor at Indo-PACOM, uh, Admiral Davidson, uh, called it uh, the most important uh, uh, geostrategic location in the Pacific because it sits astride the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea, depending on your perspective, and the size of the Philippines, uh, its proximity to Taiwan, it's very, very important strategically. Let us be reminded that during the middle of Obama's presidency, he announced the pivot to Asia. The importance of this move can be summed up by a speech from Hillary Clinton. Open markets in Asia provide the United States with unprecedented opportunities for investment, trade, and access to cutting-edge technology. Our economic recovery at home will depend on exports and the ability of American firms to tap into the vast and growing consumer base of Asia. Strategically, maintaining peace and security across the Asia-Pacific is increasingly crucial to global progress, whether through defending freedom of navigation in the South China Sea, countering the proliferation efforts of North Korea, or ensuing transparency in the military activities of the region's key players. In Southeast Asia, we are renewing and strengthening our alliances with the Philippines and Thailand, increasing, for example, the number of ship visits to the Philippines and working to ensure the successful training of Filipino counter-terrorism forces through our Joint Special Operations Task Force in Mindanao. Indeed, the Philippines has been on the Pentagon list for some time now as an important factor in creating an even larger presence in the region. The point, however, is not to necessarily find, quote, opportunities for investment, trade, and access to cutting-edge technology. The point is to prevent China from rising. On the flip side, China hasn't necessarily been friendly to the people of the Philippines. There's been some major disputes over islands in the waters between the countries, in the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea, depending on how you look at it. And during Duterte's fascistic rule, China gave his administration weapons, free of charge. These weapons were used to attack viciously and indiscriminately against activists who organized for basic human rights, against the crimes of the state, and for people's justice. These activists and organizers represent a movement that has grown larger year after year for a few decades now called the National Democracy Movement, or simply put, the ND Movement. The ND movement is a broad-based alliance of left-leaning progressive individuals and organizations seeking comprehensive social, economic, and political justice in the Philippines, composed of landless peasants, urban and rural poor, indigenous peoples, oppressed religious minorities, activists, workers, youth, and students. 
The movement seeks to address what they consider to be the root causes of injustices affecting the Filipino masses in what is analyzed to be a semi-colonial and semi-feudal society by confronting the three fundamental problems of imperialism, feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism. The National Democratic Struggle wishes to achieve genuine national liberation for the country and the realization of the democratic rights of the people by expunging the nation of foreign imperialism, landlordism, monopoly capitalists, and corrupt government officials. These new U.S. military bases in the country has major implications. The U.S. ruling class is flexing its military might towards China, it shows continued support to fascist dictators from Marcos Sr. to Marcos Jr. And the U.S. military will ultimately help this fascist state continue to attack the people of the country who are fighting for basic human rights. As the people of the Philippines fight for justice and national liberation in their country, it is equally important for us here in the United States to fight against imperialism from the other side of our planet.